Morning, Doug. Morning, boys. Say hello, Chance. Say hello, Reg. Go on, then. Go on, then. Nutters. Good morning, gents. So, from the last video was Friday. Jump to Tuesday, the 10th of May, 10 o'clock. So, I had to come in on the weekend to brew. I got caught short. We ran out of beer. So, I've been in all weekend and... Uh, We've made four, but today's the fourth batch of beer. Then we're looking at other projects that we need to do. One of them involves making a stillage for these barrels. So to put them on the stillage, I need them emptying. So I've tipped them upside down. It's a lovely sound, but they are all emptying. This one seems to have lost a lot of its char on the inside. Whether that's a bad thing or not, I don't know. But we've managed to get them all sealed. That was the most difficult one. I'll just let you listen to that for a minute. Sounds like me after curry night. <laughs> so, we are going to put these on a stillage so when they're full, we can move them around. And the stillage design that I've punted for is from warehouserackandshelf.com. Now, these are an American firm, but they built this. And I like this one for two reasons. The ones in the UK are about £200, but they don't have as big a gap in between the two barrels. So, of course, we can get in there with an airlock, because I'm going to put an airlock on these barrels when they're laid horizontally. And also, they have these cross members that join the back and the front of the stillage together. And on the UK ones, they run straight down the middle of here where the barrel would be, getting in the way of any airlocks or anything, you know. So these are just offset to the side down there, which I like. It's these cross members here, look. So I'm going to build these. I'm just going to measure the barrels up and build them to the dimensions to fit our particular barrels. Do some bendy work. I might not um, bend the steel in this manner. I might take advantage of our rollers and roll some section to, to do that job. I don't know yet. I may as well, seeing as I've got them, hadn't I? And this, though, is a project. This is a project that's going to have to be done next week because of the table so the table is all set up for electronics and I've been rebuilding the control boxes for the heating that is going on to all of the tanks we've got some more of those heat mats coming today is this an invoice for one of them yes it is so I trialed these three different types of heat mat and it turns out that the 400 watt silicon heater is the best one it's the cheapest at 32 pound 60. it's the smallest but this one comes with a built-in thermal cutout which i think is very important and the other ones don't so if somebody turned a tank on and there was no liquid in that tank to sink the heat away there's a potential that it could run away and get really hot I did also order a strip heater, that's this fella over here. Now, I thought it was cheap enough to take a punt on. It's something that you'd clamp to the side of the tank like that, and then this band will get hot, and there's very little risk of this catching on fire because it's metal and ceramic, so if it runs away too hot, it'll just glow up red and then burn out, so it'll act itself as a fuse. But I didn't find an application for that and I thought it was a little bit too uh, risky with the exposed contacts. I didn't like that either. So we've moved away from that. So we'll just keep that in stock. It'll come in handy one day. And at 36 quid, I think it was worth a punt. So today I have many more of these silicon heaters arriving. Along with 
some inline fuses so i'm going to fuse these they are running at 1.6 amps 1.8 amps sometimes depending on our voltage at the brewery so i've got two amp quick blow fuses in line and they'll also act as a protection then on top of that i've been retrofitting isolator switches onto each box so the trouble is i'll go and show you actually these barrels are still emptying so you've set up to reset love yeah 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 you've got to open the valves yeah. <laughs> so these are the boxes as they were so when we turn these off we can just press and turn it off on the STC and that's fine but there's still power to the inside because they piggyback from one to the next so they are acting as a daisy chain of power and that power still makes its way to the power supply units inside and the tilt repeaters and the CO2 timers. Of course, we don't need all that on if we've got the tank off. So I've come up with two solutions. One of them is, is one I did earlier. We put a light on, so when this is turned off, that light will remain on and we know that there's still power to this box then, because that is showing that there's power to the 12 volt power supply. But I also wanted, after I'd thought about that, a way of isolating a particular box completely so there's no accidents so therefore I've broken into the power supply holistically for this box and I've installed as you'll see a switch and then these are joined together and as you can see that one's still running this one isn't there's no power in here at all it's not affected that one whatsoever so that for me is a safety feature. We've got the heater pads on these tanks, they've been operational, they've worked, I need to do some more taping to take the pad on, but we just cut the insulation away and put the pads in, it's brilliant. Then we've got these little waterproof gel filled connectors to draw the cables into, and we're just gonna tuck that behind the insulation in there and turn that tank back on while I remember. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tanks to retrofit with the heaters, and one, two, three, four tanks to do the complete rewire, and two tanks to add the inline switch. But all eight of them, I'm gonna to have to retrofit the inline fuse as well. So just another little hole at the side of the box for a fuse holder. Well, it's been a blinding day, boys. I tell you what, we filled all the tanks and we're just about to put this heat pad under there and I thought, you know what? If you look up there carefully, it's 10 past five and everything's working fine. So I'm not even gonna bother. I'll just let this kick off overnight. We've got the tilt recording. There's just one colour missing up there, I don't know which one it is at the moment. There's normally one that uh, plays up a touch. Seems to be working perfectly. So yeah, I decided not to put that heater pad on tonight. I'll do it tomorrow. We're in early enough tomorrow morning. This ain't going to really kick off until tomorrow anyway. So I may as well just leave it couple of things I wanted to point out though so today's been really productive in fact this week has and we're, all, we're still only on Tuesday I want to take home some of the five pints bitter and tonight I'm going to do a comparison next to the bottled beer they may need chilling first though so stick around for that but secondly I received something in the post yesterday this and I did not order it. So I was absolutely over the moon when it turned up. So I've unpacked it and put it on charge. And indeed, it is an endoscope. There she is. And there's a little note inside. 
and I'll read it out. It's from Trevor. It says, Harry, been a fan for years, just joined Patreon. Hope this endoscope can be of use. Watched your recent barrel vlog and thought it might come in handy with a barrel inspection or something else used for making beer from Trevor. Well, Trevor, I don't know what to say, but thank you very much, sir. I'm about to go home and have a pint in tribute to your generosity. Thank you very much, sir. But yeah, no doubt we'll have a good old play with this and we will indeed have a look inside the bourbon whiskey barrels to see what is going on in there. And I might even poke around, poke around in a few other holes as well while I'm at it. So I'm gonna put some of the five pints cans in the car Hopefully we don't rock them about too much and then we'll put them in the fridge when we get back and take it from there. 